So if you're wondering why it's hell yeah, that's because that's the sort of response I got out of the owner. So earlier in the week, we got some panels on it, started putting the windscreen and some trim around it, and he got excited, I got excited, so I thought, let's see if we can get you guys excited. So this episode, we're gonna cover brakes, wheels, radiators, uh, aircon radiators, chrome strips, a whole lot of stuff. So stay along, enjoy the show. So my plan here today is just to try and stretch this out a bit and, and get a nice consistent bow in it. And I've got a couple of limitations, only a little wheel, so I'm restricted over here with my width. So I'm gonna do one side with the other. And then I'm also just applying a little bit of weight down on the panel to help with the stretch. But most of that stretch is happening by the wheel actually squeezing that steel together. So if I want to get this to go up high in the middle, I need to go backwards and forwards in the middle and stretch that rather than stretching the whole lot. So if you run backwards and forwards full length, it's going to go high here because this will be all the same. But if I go full length and then slowly reduce back to the middle, it should put a curve. That's the theory, whether that works. There's another thing. So just to give you an idea of how much changes have been made to this shell for the bonnet, that's a standard XC bonnet shell off my panel pan. And then the next one over is the one we're working on for Boss XC. So you can see the amount of holes that have been filled and all the extra work to, to make this all flush. And then because of the injection, that back rail has been taken out, so you can see there where this one comes around here and go over to the standard one. So this has all been changed here, that taken out, and then all these areas here. So where that steps up around for a bonnet pin on an XB, where well the XC doesn't have it, but they didn't change the pressing, so actually cut a piece out of there and taken it out of a second shell from here and moved it around to get that all nice. So we're nearly there now, I've just got a little bit more beading to do and we'll get some epoxy on it. And we've, I've rolled it this morning to get rid of that variation. So this is nice and tight and the skin's within a couple of mil by the feel of it, maybe at worst five mil. So now I can glue that together with some, um, some urethane sealer. So just doing a little job here now that's one of those frustrating things. This, this curvature here is a little bit too big a radius and it doesn't fit the scoop properly. So when I put the scoop in against the other bonnet over here, like the skin, there's a gap. So I'm just gonna heat this up red hot and I'm gonna tap it down to a dolly that's pretty much the right shape and hopefully that'll overcome the problem. So this is another one of those jobs I haven't necessarily done before, but it's got to be done. I'm just going to make this red hot in the area I want to shrink. And I'm hoping I don't, I'm thinking I don't need to use any water on it because I'm just going to knock it down to the dolly and it should suffice. That should be about all it needs. So this is the problem. This is sitting up above the skin. So when we go to put our vent in there, it's not gonna be enough thread on the vent and it's gonna look terrible. So it's better here now. So I'm gonna probably heat it out through here and put a heat shrink in there, I think. I'm just gonna go over a big area there, get it red hot, hammer it back into itself, chill it with some water. Pulling the curve in that, talking to myself again. Right. So the glass I've got here is one that's been kicking around with this car since it's been here. So it's got cracks and all in it. 
from being pushed around the workshop forever, but I've just put some, some foam blocks under that to set it up so that we can start working on making sure all these moulds are going to fit nice. So they tend from the factory to want to, you know, not fit well into the corners. And then the moulding that runs across the top, which is really what I wanted to show you, this one here's obviously been cleaned up, but it's nowhere near the shape it should be. You know, it's miles away from being correct. So I had another set out in the container which I've gone and grabbed and you can see there just how much variation there is in the shape of those. So um, when you look down the, the nice pretty one, it's actually not the right shape and you can see where it's been pulled off the clips. So I'm gonna clean that black one up now. Where the tape is there, it's got one little bend in it. And what that's doing is it's holding it out on this end, you know, when it sits in nice in the middle. So one of the issues with these moulds is when they get pulled off, they often get bent in the wrong direction. So by applying a bit of extra weight when you're doing the polishing, you can actually bring the mould back into shape. So the heat from the wheel in combination with the right amount of pressure is going to actually take the the shape and put it back where it belongs. But it's a bit of a refined art, so if you pull too hard, then you're gonna end up bending it and stuffing it. But um, with the right amount of weight, you can um, get the shape you need. Righto, so after explaining how we managed to get the brakes to fit and all that sort of stuff, part of the issue clearly was to clear the wheel. So I just grabbed the wheel to have a look. And you know, the wheel has got the sort of right offset on the back to take the big brake. So there are six spot. Um, that's the same Brembo that's on um, the, the supercharged GT Falcons. And then the look of that classic five-spoke wheel uh, in billet. And it's just got that nice two-tone look with the, the, the full polish and that little bit of map to go with it, I think it's going to be sensational. So the front end in this car is a Rod Tech double wishbone, so two wishbones, all nice and stainless. Um, comes as a package. This particular one was bought without brakes, so we needed to mount the six spot on there. And one of the issues was to get the clearance we needed in relation to the front end, but also with the wheel. So to get this bigger caliper inside the, the wheels that I'll show you later, um, we need now to do a rotor. So this is a, a standard FG rotor off, actually off our GT um, that we replace. So they're a standard Brembo from the factory. So we've utilised that to get our setup for our distance and that's the size we want to run. But we need a different offset. So Paul up at Anything Racing in, um, in Brisbane, that's a friend of the owner. I've sent the stub axle and the brake all mounted up to him and the other one off the other side of this and they're now going to make a two-piece um, rotor, which are obviously available, but the centre hat will be made specific to this car. And while it's there, they're going to actually put the sensors into that rotor to run the ABS as well. So Paul at Anything Racing has taken that on, so we sent that off this week, and um, hopefully within a few weeks we'll get that back. OK, so now we're getting the front of the car together. This is... Um, Lucky we've got a panel van apart at the moment because we've got panel van parts everywhere. This is the, the shell off the panel van for the bonnet. Mounted up on the hinges, we're now working out radiator, so this enables me to look through this and work out what clearances I've got to my radiator. So the radiator that's sitting in there is a XB, XC um, aircon car radiator, so cross flow, triple core, maximum width between the rails, so that's the size we're looking at. Consultation with Peter, the owner, we're going to run with a copper brass radiator for a whole lot of reasons, but primarily the fact that longevity and effectiveness, if you're not chasing weight, it's the way to go. And I've told him I want to paint the radiator and keep the motor as the highlight. So all of the extremities in the bay will be all painted. So it'll be painted. So that's how they come standard. We're going to put a top in it. So this is just a bit of one mil we've bent up to get an idea what it's going to look like. So it'll have a top like that, so it's nice and clean. The decision now is whether we run with the tanks, the brass tanks, the original style tanks with all the depressions in it, which I actually quite like the look of, 
or whether we make up some brass tanks in flat that'll tend to make it a, look a little bit like an aluminium radiator. And I haven't quite made up my mind, and I've talked to Peter about that, that we'll make a decision, and then we've got to work out how we're going to mount it. So the only thing then is we've got to make a, a shroud to go on the back, and we'll put a 16-inch spell fan on there. You can buy one, it'll pull about 3,000 cubic feet per minute. So that's the way we'll go with that. So the radiator itself is full width, so we've opened that up, and we've flattened replaced all this steel in here and made it nice and flat because normally that's full full of holes. So we've got full width, but now we've got to get the aircon radiator. So it's once again the full width and it'll run, it's um, 30 centimetres by 685 and come out to here. And then we've got another one that's got to fit in there as well for the um, transmission and then one for the power steer. So we've got to get all of those nicely and neatly mounted and then they'll all fit behind the stock grill. So now that we're forward, the next thing is the lock plate. So this is the original XC one. I was humming and hurrying whether I would get rid of that and do something trendy or whatever, but as you can already tell the hours in this car, it just adds up, adds up, and you never get there. So I'm gonna run with the original pin and safety catch, which means I need this area here and this area here to be operative. And we can run the standard cable but what I'm looking to do is to take the top off of this plate and make a new one probably out of some two mil and just make it look a bit more symmetrical and a bit tidier. Um, that way it'll be a few hours work instead of trying to redesign the whole front end and also be comfortable in the fact that if you get a bonnet that comes up, it's all on factory mounts and you're sort of covered for safety wise. So chrome strips, I've shown you already before how they don't fit. So we've got these now to a point where we're pretty close, but you can see it's sitting up here. So the guard's primarily bolted on, but not 100%. It's a little bit higher than this panel. So this one sits into a clip that holds it up under that mould. This one here is down tight, so it's gonna want a little bit of work because if this sits up like that, it holds it out here. And it's held on by a clip that's just held by the stainless. So if you don't have it, what I class as a relaxed fit, before you start, it's never gonna be right. So we'll work on getting our panels down and then come back to these and look at it. But the other thing I'm chasing is how far I've got to have it off the steel with the, when they urethane it in, when they put the dam on there to get this height so that this fits nice and then we've got no gap to the glass. So all of that's important to do your setup so that when your, your windscreen guy comes, you know what you want him to do. Otherwise, if he puts it in too high or too low, these aren't gonna fit. Up the top, where I showed earlier where it didn't fit, and this one was sort of close. So we've given that a bit of work. It probably wants just a little bit more because it's still just sitting out a tiny bit from the body here. So we need a little bit more curvature through here. And then this one slides on and off so we can get it back into the corner and then that little radius there, depending on how far you have the car back, this has still got the factory lead in it. You can either add some more lead, a bit of bog, or actually weld the steel up to get that radius because what I'm looking for when I'm done is that I've got this same gap going all the way around. And if I make all the molds fit in that nice relaxed fit, they're gonna go back in when it's finished, nice and easy, and we're not relying on the clips to pull it into shape. So, when that goes in, you can see it moving there. So you push that in and it comes out there, vice versa. So there's a clip, a pin. I'll show you those pins. So there's a little pin there that the clip goes on. You're gonna rely on those pins to hold it in place. These ones here, then you're probably really opening yourself up that it's not gonna go on 100%. So now I've got the front on. One of the other things that I'm um, working on is We've deleted the side light out of here. So because the XC's got a front mounted, like a grill mounted indicator, it's got to have a side one. So the factory one was here. So we've shortened this up by 30 mil. So the idea was always to remove that. Um, that was done even before the car came to me. And I'm thinking that we'd put a side light down here, which is more in line with the FG type thing with the side light out of that. And then I've got this badge that came in all the boxes with bits and pieces. So that's a 429 Cobra Jet badge, I believe, off the Mustang. So obviously this is a Cobra Jet motor. So what I'm looking at doing is 
making something like that that'll fit there where the 5.8 used to be. And what I would consider doing is machining out the 429 and then putting a yellow LED behind it that'll give us our side light for side indicator. So that's just something that I'm playing with at the moment. I haven't made a 100% decision, but that's my thoughts at the moment. All good, let's roll. So this, as I was saying before, this is the template for the extra foam on the insert. Um, I made the template to fit up on the outside there. Okay, so when it goes to the middle, you'll see, so it's actually got a bit of a gap. All right, so that's just because I've kept this foam to have that concave like it does originally. Um, just so it sort of hugs you a little bit more when you're sitting on it instead of just being a dead flat surface uh, which I guess a lot of custom seats are they're usually just sort of dead flat because it's probably easier I guess but um, yeah I thought we'll keep this one the same as original to make it nice and comfortable so that's just got that little gap there I'll still cut all my panels out exactly the same and literally just when they're all glued together so i've just cut two out now but when these are all glued together they will still just glue down and still just sit right in there anyway and it will still follow the shape of that original foam and you'll have that nice concave straight through there and also just touching on what howard went over on the last video um these flat springs here are the original fg ones they do have a tendency to snap, um, not all the time, but yeah, sometimes they can. So because these ones are all in really good condition, I've left those in there and just added these coil springs in for the extra support. Um, still got the same amount of uh, flexibility through there. And yeah, so that just gives it you know, a bit of extra strength so they don't wanna snap. But also with these seats, they crack through here. This is just where the runner bolt's on. They can crack through here. So they've just added a, a piece of steel in here, folded it up and, and welded it in there to add that extra strength through there, which is good. I did just have to tap this in and just I just welded it to the frame there and just welded that little join down there just to, just to bring those wings in a little bit. So yeah, they're getting there. Get a little shot back there, that's what we want to get to. So I'll just show you this. this. I've just drawn up the shape of the seat here. I originally had it coming in a bit more at the top because the FG headrest is pretty narrow. It's actually a bit higher, but it's pretty narrow through here. Um, and then yeah, Howard suggested, you know, maybe we make it wider so it suits the XC a bit more. So I've just adjusted that, made it a bit wider here. Um, so now it's pretty identical to how the original XC is. That with the the line through there for the headrest um, and I've just roughly drawn that so that's the face side of it and then my other template is here which I've stuffed in the seat just there so we'll go there and that's my side profile and then yeah once that goes in I can glue that in and then I'll start cutting out the sides I'll just show you what I've got here. I just bought some U channel um, rubber from Bunnings um, just because that two mil plate there, even though I've smoothed all, all these edges out, um, yeah, there's no sharp edges or anything, but the foam can still rub on it. So I'm just going to get this U channel rubber, stick that over the edge, and just do it all the way down there and all four of them. All right, it's starting to take shape now. Um, just cut on my side bolster pieces out. So they're just gonna sit on there like that. So I'll glue these in place and then I can add a bit of foam on the sides as well and then start shaping this part up. 
um, and then I'll get onto the headrest, start shaping that up. They're a pretty difficult sort of seat to do because there's just so much shape going on, so it's just been racking my brain trying to get these patterns right. I've had to change them a fair bit and whatever, but they're getting there now and they're starting to look really good. I'm pretty impressed with them. Um, so yeah, I'll keep going and get these glued in place. Get it going. So this big lump of metal here is um, obviously the diff that's going in this car. So this is um, a Kugel independent rear end out of the US. So the centre is a nine inch Ford centre. And I'll go into this next week and give you a bit more about it. But the reason I'm talking about it today is it's been sitting around in this car on and off out of this shop and another shop and was looking pretty untidy. And I had someone give it a bit of a tidy up this week with a bit of the old Faithful Mother's mag and aluminium cleaner. And it has come up spectacular. So with the diff, um, just a glimpse now, next week I'll go into some more detail about what it is, how it works, how we're going to hook that up with what type of tail shaft and the type of gearbox, because all that stuff is out being organised at the moment with some of our suppliers.